What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play one of my absolute favorite ADCs, Ash. So Ash is one of those ADCs that I actually suggest or recommend to just about anybody at any skill level. The reason for this is that you can actually almost always teach somebody even at like intermediate and really high level players about which kind of mistakes they're doing on other champions. So this is not only a great champion for new players to learn the ADC role, but it's actually also something that's really good once in a while to play as a very experienced player to make sure that you have the fundamentals down. Anyway, before we get too much into this video, then if you are new in here, make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And uh, yeah, if you want to see me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. Also, if you have some specific champion that you would like me to cover, then just tell me in the comment section below and I'll make sure to prioritize those champions first. Anyway, let's just jump on into this one. Uh, we're going to go down the lane. We have a Lux support, which is actually a pretty decent support for an Ash, And we're playing against a Twitch and a Varius. Uh, so this is kind of a strange bot lane overall. Um, but yeah. It's going to be a pretty interesting game. The way I'm going to do this guide is basically I'm going to try to explain things as we go and basically kind of let you guys into the mind of, uh, yeah, of, of what I'm thinking when I play this champion and what you should be focusing on at the early game or at the different stages of the game on this champion. Um, just one thing I want to make clear is I'm not going to focus on perfect gameplay. I'm going to focus on just trying to make it somewhat entertaining and teaching you guys a little bit about the champion and how to play it. So if I miss some farm here and there, then like, yeah, don't mind it too much. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we do well in this game. Uh, the bigger focus is to actually teach you guys a little bit about it. All right. So for the early game, generally speaking, you want to try and get down to lane as soon as you help out your jungler. If he starts in bot side, of course, uh, then you want to make sure that you support him. Once you go into lane, then you actually want to try and see if you can get the level 2 power spike. For those of you who don't know specifically what the level 2 power spike is, it's basically that you re reach level 2 before the opposing bot lane. The way you do this is basically by clearing the first minion wave and then the first three melee minions of the second wave. Uh, you don't want to do this by over pushing. Whoop, let's see if I can uh, help out here. Whoop. Actually, a pretty decent trade. I might. Oh, yep, that's the flash. Um, the way you want to do this is is quite simply that you don't want to over push. So when the first wave is there, don't just freely auto attack unless the opposing bot lane is doing the same thing. Oh, we gotta get out of here. I can slow that guy just a tiny bit. I'm probably gonna have to. I might have to flash. Yeah, I'm gonna flash. And we should be able to survive this. All right. So they used just about any, everything right there. We're going to back out. This is not going to be a great back, but it's fine. They used all of their stuff. So this could be worse. So Volley's right there. All right. So level two power spike is quite simple. You just want to reach level two before the enemy. And you want to try somewhat to still keep the uh, the wave around the, the middle of the bot lane. If you push it too far down here around this area, then you won't be able to really benefit that much from the level two power spike because you cannot like go on the offensive. Like you won't really like level two power spike is all about actually taking a fight because if you're level two and they're level one, your your overall stats almost like you're almost twice as strong. Like that's a, maybe a, a rough overestimation, but you should never lose a level two. If you're level two and they're level one, you should never ever lose that fight. There is, there's just no way. Like, yeah. All right. So that's the first thing you want to make sure that you're trying to do. Oh, I'm trying to get there. I won't be able to. Oh, well, nice. All right. That's going to be a free kill. Thank you. Good job, man. All right. So that's a pretty free kill. So that's basically the level two power spike. You want to try and go for the first kill. As soon as you reach level two and they're still level one, then you just want to go all in and basically, of course, as long as your support helps you out as well. All right. So in the scenarios where you won't get the level two power spike, really think about whether or not it's worth it. Uh, if you can see the enemy is getting it, then just go back under your turret or go a little bit back. It's not worth risking too much just to uh, to get a single CS more. If they're level two, 
then think about quite the opposite that they should want to fight you pretty much instantly all right so for how you play this champion in the early game um can't really do too much to help her there she's doing a good job zoning him out but twitch is going to be back in a second and i need to be a little 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 bit aware of this all right so what you want to do in the early game is quite simple you actually just want to try and sit and poke your enemies using your w and that's more or less it um whenever you hit them with your w and this is one of the reasons why a champion like whoop, a champion like lux actually works out really well together with uh with ash is because lux is a poke champion and same is ash like ash really just wants to poke people in the early game she's not in early in the early game she's not the the biggest lane bully in the sense like draven and lucian and these other champs that just want to go all in and want to go for a fight generally speaking we talk about adcs having three different types of role they can have or treat fit into one of three different categories an adc can be either or they can be more than one category but they can be utility they can be a bully or they can be a hyper carry so Ash is what we call a utility ADC. And the reason for this is quite simply that she is mostly just utility. Um, she slows targets whenever she attacks. Her ult uh, is a is a whoop, is a really, really, really good uh if I can help here. Uh, her ult is a really, really good ability to just catch people off guard. And basically, uh, yeah catch people out when they're mispositioning or start even using it to start and engage like this ability is really freaking good and you can even use the cross map to help other lanes once you kind of got the feel of it you have to make sure that if you use it cross map that you're pretty sure that you will hit or that you don't need the ability for yourself within the next uh, short amount of time because if you just throw it every time to another lane and you never hit anything then you're literally just going to be throwing away probably your most vo uh, like valuable ability. All right, so right here, I'm going to back out while we're doing this. All right, so for the early game, make sure you try to poke your enemies using your W. If you're playing with another poke champ, a support uh, that like Lux or Syra or something else that really wants to poke, then really just benefit from that. Keep poking. Don't go for all ins. Get them low in health before you go for an engage. So... If you're playing with quite the opposite, let's say you're playing with something that likes to go all in, that you have a support like, let's say, a Leona, generally speaking, most melee supports, then there is a couple of different things you want to stay aware of in the laning phase. So if you're playing with a damage dealer support, a range of damage dealer support like Lux that I'm doing here, then our objective is as an ADC, to try and shove the lane pretty far down uh, into the enemy side. And the reason why we want to do this is because most ranged casters like Lux and anything that deals damage as a ranged champion support, most of them, or generally speaking, almost all of them, have purely skill shots. This basically means that whenever you have a champ that is purely... Oh, oh wow. I thought he actually died. Uh, whenever you have a champ that is purely skill shots, then it's easier for your support to hit their target if there's not filled with minions in the way like imagine lux wants to snare if there's a full minion wave it's much more difficult for her to hit her ability than if there's none so if we push them under the turret or pretty far the enemy is going to be very very focused on just trying to hit their uh get their farm meaning they can't really trade back unless they want to sacrifice farm and this makes it really easy for us. So if you're playing with the ranged support, push the wave into the, as much into the turret as you can, uh, as long as you know where their jungler is. Of course, do, do this in a safe manner, but try to keep the wave somewhat on their side. However, if you're playing with a melee support, it's quite the opposite. Uh, because with a melee support, then most melee supports, basically almost all of them, again, need the opposite thing of a ranged support they need space they need some space to run their, down their enemies you don't want your melee support to jump under turret if it's not necessary but the better thing can just be instead 
Holy crap, she actually hit that. Um, the better thing can, can just be to uh, basically push back a little bit and be right around this area here. Try and get the wave here and just hold it around this area. Because this will allow you your your support to basically run down the enemy and go for those all those all ins that you really want to go for. Right here, I'm gonna just fire all my ult. That should be a free kill. Um, whoop. there we go. Right here, I think I can probably kill this guy. Okay, he flashed. Never mind. If he didn't flash, we would have him. We'll push this, and I need it back now because I'm sitting on way, way, way too much gold right now. Whoop. So I'm just going to back out. Seeing as Belveth is here, she's going to take the gold from... Uh... Oh, she's... Oh, okay. Fair enough. That kind of worked out. All right. So very shortly, ranged support that pokes. Try and push the wave. Melee support. Try and keep the wave at your side so ranger support around this area melee support around this area quite simple with ash seeing as you don't have and this is the fundamental reason why ash is such a good champion for anyone to pick up and learn how to play because it'll make you better at any other adc in the game actually probably most champions champions overall even if you're not generally playing adc but it'll teach you how to position correctly because most other champions are pretty forgiving because you just have a dash and you can just dash away and you're like, okay, I got out. But what if you could just learn how to position so you don't need the flash there or your dash right away? Then you would have that dash for another time that might be a lot better for you. That might either be for an aggressive play or for a, for just a general, like a better point in time instead of having to use it super early to get away. Okay, I need to find a way out. This is not good. I'm just backing out. Right here, I'm kind of looking. At, I don't like this fight at all. Because if I go that way, I'm going to get caught. So I'm I'm kind of just hanging back. There are four and we're only three. So I'm not going in here. If I, if I go here, I could probably hit volley. Maybe we would kill him. But the thing is, I would get caught between Twitch and Varus behind me. But I should have pinged my team off much earlier. And they're going to come back down for me now. So I'm going to back out and W because... Whoop, might as well get a little poke in on them. All right. So one of the things that is very important to learn and know about Ash is whenever you're fighting with her, you basically never want to stand still. You always want to be kiting and moving because this is like... This makes it, first of all, harder for the enemy to hit you. It allows you to stay on your feet and make sure that you can run them down easier. And it just it's overall a really good thing to learn because it teaches you how to uh, how to attack move always. And as soon as you hit a target on Ash, then they get slowed, meaning that it's actually pretty hard for them to get away from you. So if they start moving towards you, you kite them backwards. And if they try to run away, you just try to run them down, of course. When you attack move, um, one of the things you need to keep in mind and something that I see a lot of Ash players actually mistakenly doing is that you want to make sure that you use your Q correctly. Some people actually use this right away when they run into a fight. This is not the optimal thing to do for the most damage. Whoop. Yeah, I can't really... Whoop. I can keep him off. Okay, I did not see that at all. Yeah, my bad. All right. Um, for our next item... The thing is, this game, I, w I went Kraken, so I probably should have gone a Molar Shield Bow, to be honest. A Molar Shield Bow would be a much better item for this game overall. I think. Well, they have two tanks. Like, this works as well, but if we went a Molar Shield Bow, we would go Lord Dominix. Anyway, itemization, uh, I guess, uh, is kind of iffy in this game. <laughs> But yeah, Immortal Shield Bow would be a good option as well here. Um, they're not that bur only Kiana's really bursty. Like both things can work to be fair. Destroyed. All right. So whenever you attack on Ash, and this is something I see a lot of people mistakenly doing, is when you use your whoop, I can fire off my ult. Okay, that was just not on purpose at all. I actually want to hit the other guy, but whatever. Um. 
is that you want to make sure that you don't use your Q before you've thrown out the first auto attack. And the reason why this is, is basically because your Q, your Ranger's focus, is what we call an auto attack reset. So auto attack resets are quite simply just a phrase that we use in, in League to say it, it diminishes or it removes the time between two auto attacks. Because you know, generally speaking, when you're auto attacking on any champion, they auto attack once, then a little while goes by, and then they auto attack again. If we, when we use our Q, it instantly attacks again. So let's charge it up and I'll kind of show you guys real quick. We'll charge it up here. So if I attack this minion and click Q, you can see how the auto attack goes off right after. Oh, I'm, this might actually put me in a real bad spot. Um, it goes off right after, which is honestly really, really, really cool. So this means that even if you have four stacks up ready to use your range, ranger's focus, just hold your horses, shoot out the first auto, then use it because it actually gives you that full auto damage extra, which is quite insane to be honest. Like it's really freaking good. Uh, let's see what are they building. We, mm, I think seeing as we kind of screwed up or build path, we'll go for that one uh, and we'll start building this. All right. So I, I'm just choosing plated steel steel caps here because we didn't go immortal shield bow, so our survivability is kind of iffy. Wait, no. Oh god, that guy is fucking a. Oh, he's AP. I didn't see. Thank. <laughs> All right, this is my build. Build this game is uh, awful, but whatever. All right, thank. Grab these. All right, I gotta be a little careful here. We'll just back out. There we go. All right, so let's grab this. But yeah, make sure that you don't use your Q before you've done the first auto. Like it's pointless. It doesn't really give you any benefit to cast it before because you might as well get that free auto. Uh, with your E, then you should actually be using this quite frequently. I'm not saying when it gets, whenever it's off cooldown, but whenever you don't know where their jungler is, then you should be using it. In this game, because I'm trying to explain at the same time, my game awareness is not that great at the same time. Um, but you should be using this ability whenever you're either one, scared of getting ganked, two, you could use it prior to, uh, to going for an initiate with your ult because you're like, okay, I, I want to ensure that I, this doesn't kind of backfire. Or you can use it either to help the rest of your team with vision. And this is quite a simple god. Yeah, that Quinn is just holy shit. <laughs> oh, Kiana, sorry, not Quinn. That Kiana is super fed. 12 to 1. Jeez. I will grab that one. Grab these two. All right, they're running in with this. All right, so for the early game, quite simply, try and farm up, play safe. You don't have to get a ton of kills. If you can, that's great. If not, just get your farm. You are really good even in the late game. And because you're old, you're never really fully useless, even if you've done it, had a pretty bad game, because you're still kind of able to, whoop, gonna be a free kill um you're still able to just use your ult to your team's advantage help them kind of keep things at bay so for the mid game you want to rotate to the middle of the uh or to the mid lane which is kind of funny mid lane mid game uh but you want to you want to get to the the mid lane and kind of depending on which elo you're playing on your mid lane should ideally your mid lane needs to go to one of the side lanes opposite of where your top laner is. If they don't do this, then you might have to go sometimes down to either bot lane or top lane and grab some farm for yourself. If, if your mid laner is kind of, uh, I don't know, eager to sit in mid lane, even though it's not that great for your team. Um, the reason why it's best to have the ADC in the mid lane in the mid game and in the late game as well is basically because as you're you're the most squishy one and you you're basically also one of the ones that are in team fights gonna grant the best value first of all because you're ranged whoop all right cool 
uh, and like overall objectives your ability to push objective is extremely good on uh whoop, on adcs all right here we're gonna be able to swap target hopefully i do have my ult so i'm sitting on it for a second we're gonna fire this off it's gonna be a free kill just hit it thank you nice and again this is where you can see just how strong ash can be even though we're not fed like the old and the slowing potential of this champion is really great uh when we were fighting volley and twitch a little bit earlier maybe i could have hit twitch a bit earlier but the thing is i always want to as an adc player you generally speaking most of the time like 99 percent of the time you want to hit whatever targets closest to you you can't go for the back line because if you go for the back line and their their front line runs into you you die so it's better for you to just deal damage to whatever you can reach and stay safe because you are a monster in terms of damage oh wow uh you are an absolute monster in terms of damage so you want to make sure that you just stay safe and deal as much damage as possible if you by any means can't be safe dealing damage and sometimes it's better not to i'm not saying play super passive i'm saying really think about it like if if your team is going in on the back line and they or on on something and there's maybe an annie right in front of you like you won't be able if annie has her old you won't be able to uh to kill literally when we want her like no way she's gonna one shot you she's just gonna use her stun throw tapers in your face and yeah that's the last teddy bear you're gonna hawk that's for sure so really think about how how you play and like whether or not you can go in this is one of the primary mistakes i see on adcs is basically just that they have the tendency to just always go in thinking that they gotta fight 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 and yeah fighting is great on adc you are gonna do a ton of it but if you're a little mindful about how you do it you're gonna do so much better like i promise you just take it slow yeah for the mid game you you want to try and rotate to the mid lane as your uh your your mid laner hopefully should go to the side lane when you're in the mid lane you're closer to all objectives of the map meaning that this is the real reason why you want to be there as an adc it's because you deal the most damage on turrets or usually you do uh you deal the most damage to obje neutral objectives as well and you also need the most protection and the mid lane is despite what everybody might think it's actually the safest place on the map the reason why that is is because all your teammates are closer like everybody's closer your junglers in one of the jungles next to you meaning they can be there pretty quickly you still have a support so this means that we're putting two people in the mid lane instead of two people in the side lane meaning that if the enemy goes for the baron well we have two people down here not being able to do jack shit. so it's much better for you to rotate into the mid lane all right it's so right here we're gonna go over this uh we should be a free drake really really easily there we go i'm gonna pull it we're gonna pull it back out okay apparently not um we're gonna take this And I'm going to go down and just push this in. And we're going to keep the two melee minions alive for a little bit. Because I want the wave to kind of... Oh. Let me give it a second here. I don't think anybody's on their way. But this is where being Ash is just amazing. Because we can scan real quick. See, okay. Kiana's right here. She's actually backing, so... And I see three, four people in mid, so I can push this. And even though I'm an ADC and I am pre very, very squishy and a very vulnerable target, then when I know where everybody is, I'm still allowed to split push. I can split push. I know where every all players are. Thing is, they're going Baron here, and I'm really far away, which is not good. Uh, I'm just going to really quickly take these minions. I'm going to let the melee minions stay alive. And we're doing this to create a slow push down here. So this means that more our minions are going to collide on these and going to start pushing. I'm probably not going to be able to get there in time. Nope. I'm a bit too far away. And hopefully, because my team is going in, 
I'm thinking about throwing my old bed. I, I, there's not really anything to do with Horde. It's pointless. My team's already dead, so I'm not going to do anything. I might have to flash here. Whoop. So that Kiana is a monster. She's 18 to 2. She's like, if she looks at us, like, we die. And I think Belveth is actually AFK, so that's pretty great. Uh, we'll grab that one. Like, this game is not lost per se. The only issue is this Kiana. But the thing is, seeing as we're playing Ash, like, we can actually shut her down. We can just ult her. Yes, it's not necessarily easy to hit her, but it's possible. It's very, very possible. All right. So we're going to go to this side. I'm going to keep my eye out. Whoop. Okay. And whoop. we are going to survive. Let's see if we can do the comeback of the No. Okay. <laughs> GG. GG. Okay. But it was a pretty fun game overall. But the thing is, even though we did not end up winning this game, we had a bit of fun, but something we didn't talk too much about in the late game. The late game is very close to the mid game. You want to, as an Ash player, always stay back, be behind your front line and have your team in front of you. Then you just attack the closest target and keep kiting backwards and really do think about your position. Use your role to try and catch out essential targets in this game. That will be Kiana, like we tried to do at the end. And just make sure you shot him down. Stay safe. Deal as much damage as you can. Ash is pretty great because not only is she a utility ADC, but she's actually also an ADC that does a ton of damage. Anyway, I know this game didn't go like extremely well, but I think it there's a, quite a few takeaways. We might do another one of these for Ash at some point, but I think there's quite a few takeaways for you guys from this game. So I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to hang out with me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. But that's going to be it for this time. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.